again welcome you on the lecture series of Cello Foundations. Now, in the last lecture, we discussed about the settlements of Cello Foundations and we have seen that the total settlement of the foundation comprises of immediate elastic settlement, consolidation settlement and secondary consolidation settlement. In order to determine immediate or elastic settlement, we can use elastic theory and when we use elastic theory by knowing the parameters of the soil mass E s and mu and depending upon the type of foundation, we can find out influence factor and from these for a net load intensity of Q n which is placed on a width of width footing B, we can determine the immediate settlement by elastic theory. Jen Wu et al has also proposed uh, an equation for determining elastic settlement and by this if we know the parameters mu 0 and mu 1, we can substitute these values here and can get elastic settlement. They have also given guidance for determining mu 0 and mu 1. Mu 0 is a function of the d f by b where d f is the depth of foundation and b is the width of the foundation. Whereas, mu 1 is a function of the shape of the footing uh, and it is also a function of the ratio of h upon b where h is the thickness of the soil stratum below the foundation level. So, we can use we can use those charts and from those charts we can obtain mu 0 and mu 1 and substitute in this equation and get immediate elastic settlement. Now, in order to determine consolidation settlement, consolidation settlement can be determined if we have a relationship between wide ratio and the effective stress and this relationship can be obtained by conducting consolidation test or odometer test in laboratory on a soil specimen of undisturbed soil which we extract from the field from a particular depth of the compressible layer. And we can determine this consolidation settlement by this equation that is S c equal to delta E upon 1 plus E 0 into H 0 where is delta E is the change in wide ratio from load intensity of sigma 0 bar or sigma 0 dash in situ st stress plus delta sigma bar. So, this delta E is, rep is representing change in the wide ratio that is change in volume of wires that is the change in volume of soil due to the application of delta sigma that is increase in stress. And if we know the initial wide ratio E 0 and the thickness of the clay stratum, we can obtain consolidation settlement. Now, this delta E can be written in different form also like we can write this delta E in terms of coefficient of compressibility A V. This A V is nothing but the slope of the relationship between E and sigma 0 bar for a particular stress range. So, for that stress range we find out this A V and then we can use in place of delta E we can use this and find out the consolidation settlement. And when we use this the nature of the equation is a v upon 1 plus E 0 into H 0 delta sigma dash. Now, this A v upon 1 plus E 0 is also known as coefficient of volume compressibility or coefficient of volume change. So, in place of this we can use this M v and then we can determine this consolidation settlement by equation M v equal into H 0 into delta sigma dash. Now, when we plot this relationship between E and sigma bar on E log sigma bar curve, we will find that the initial portion of the uh, curve is, is a curved one and as we as the uh, stress increases that relationship assumes a straight line relationship. So, wherever the straight line portion of the curve is there that is the part where the soil will behave as the normally consolidated clay and the slope of that curve is nothing but the compression index. So, that compression index can be determined from there and in place of delta E we can use the relationship in terms of compression index and the consolidation settlement will be C c into H 0 upon 1 plus E 0 
log to the base 10 sigma 0 bar plus delta sigma bar divided by sigma 0 bar. Now, in the portion where the soil will behave as the pre-consolidated clay or the over-consolidated clay which we can determine by uh, obtaining the value of pre-consolidation pressure uh, using the Cassegrain ray method and if the stress range is in the pre-consolidated range in place of compression index we use a term which is known as uh, recompression index and this CR can be replaced by CC. So, C, th this will be written as CC H0 upon 1 plus C0 log sigma 0 dash plus delta sigma dash upon sigma 0 dash. Now, if the total stress range from sigma 0 dash to sigma final dash that is the sigma 0 dash plus delta sigma dash is in the pre-consolidated as well as normally consolidated range then the settlement can be determined in two parts from sigma 0 dash to sigma c dash we use the recompression index and from sigma c dash to sigma 0 dash plus delta sigma dash we use the compression index and the summation of these two will give us the consolidation settlement. Now, whatever settlement we have determined so far these are to be corrected for the three dimensional consolidation as well as the uh, depth effect or the embedment effect. So, Scampton and Jerome has given a method by which we can uh, apply a correction for the three dimensional consolidation. Now, here we determine consolidation settlement on the basis of one dimensional consolidation and then we uh, correct it for three dimensional case. Now, he, they have suggested a settlement coefficient mu and this mu can be determined by this particular equation. So, SC equal to mu into SOC where SOC is the settlement deter determined on the basis of odometer or the consolidation test. The settlement coefficient mu as shown in next figure is a function of type of soil or the A value and the shape of foundation. This method is also recommended by the IS code IS 8009 part 1 1976. So, this is the plot between the settlement coefficient versus the pore pressure coefficient for different values of H by B ratio. Now, for the circular footing as well as for the strip footing. So, this coefficient mu can be obtained using this chart for given value of the uh, pore pressure coefficient A and depending upon the H, the thickness of the clay layer and H by B ratio. The such, uh, recommendations are also given in the tabular form which can be used as guidelines uh, for the values of settlement coefficient like if we have a very sensitive clay like soft alluvial and marine clay then in that case this mu value can be taken as 1 to 1.2. For the case of normally consolidated clays it is taken as 0.7 to 1. For the case of over consolidated clays it is taken as 0.5 to 0.7 and for heavily over consolidated clays it is 0.2 to 0.5. So, using this settlement coefficient mu we can correct the settlement determined on the basis of consolidation settlement. Then we also apply the correction for the rigidity of foundation. Now, here in the analysis we have determined the settlement for the flexible foundation and we have seen that the, the settlement behavior as well as the pressure be below the foundation for the rigid footing as well as the flexible footing are different for sands and clays. So, we will have to apply a correction factor to account for the rigidity of foundation. Now, according to IS 8009 part 1 1976, the ratio of the total settlement of a rigid foundation to the total settlement at the center of a flexible foundation is called the rigidity factor and a rigidity factor equal to 0.8 is recommended by the code of practice for computing the settlement of a rigid footing. We also correct the settlement for uh, 
uh, the depth of embedment of foundation. Whatever settlement we have determined, we assume that, that the uh, footing is placed on the surface. The settlement below an embedded foundation will be less than the settlement of a hypothetical foundation at the surface. The reason is the vertical stress increase due to a load transferred below the ground surface is smaller than the vertical stress increase due to surface load. Fox in 1948 obtained the relationship between the average settlement of an embedded footing and the average settlement of uh, the same footing at the surface and he has suggested the depth correction factors as S embedded divided by S surface and these are shown in the next figure. As you can see from this figure that the depth factor is given here and that is a function of this ratio D upon under root L B where D is the depth of the foundation, L is the length of the foundation and B is the width of the foundation. Now for different values of L by B ratio starting from L by B equal to 1 to L by B equal to 100 from these plots we can obtain the depth factor and can use in the determination of the actual settlement of an embedded footing. Then comes the seat of settlement. Now this seat of settlement is can be defined as the stress zone within which the stress induced by the load are large enough to cause significant orders of set settlement. The stresses outside this zone are so small that they do not contribute to any significant settlement. The depth of this zone of influence depends on the nature of structure, the shape and disposition of the loaded area, the loading intensity, the soil profile and the engineering properties of soil. The seat of settlement is generally taken as the zone bounded by 20 percent vertical stress contour. In a square footing, this extends up to a depth of about 1.5 times the width of the footing and up to 3 times B in the case of strip footing. For important structures, the seat of settlement is taken to extend up to zone bounded by 10 percent pressure valve that is to a depth of 2B for a square footing and 6V for a strip footing. In the case of a rectangular footing, it is important to understand that it is the shorter dimension that control the significant depth rather like the bending of a one way concrete slab in the shorter direction. It is more logical to relate the seat of settlement to the ratio delta sigma upon sigma dash, the ratio of increase in stress due to the in situ uh, stress or the overburden pressure. One commonly used guideline is to take the seat of settlement as extending up to a depth where the increase in stress due to structural load is 10 percent and 5 percent for the important structures of the in situ stress before the application of the load. Next figure illustrates the use of pressure valve concept 1.5 to 2B guideline and the ratio delta sigma upon sigma dash equal to 10 percent guideline concept in determining the seat of settlement. Now as you can see from this particular figure that this is the case of a square footing of width B. Now this is the ground surface then the variation of the overburden pressure which can be determined as gamma into z is shown by this particular figure, is shown by this particular figure by this straight line and the, uh, the sigma bar distribution is shown by this particular line. Now if we consider the 10 percent of the pressure valve, then the 10 percent of the pressure valve will give this 10 percent to 20 percent of Qn here, but that will be the increase in pressure, increase in pressure due to the loading which is placed at a foundation this, this particular level. So the seat of settlement will be of the order of 1.5 to 2B. Now if we consider the ratio of delta sigma bar divided by delta, uh, delta sigma bar divided by sigma dash, then this, this line shows the relationship for 0.1, 10 percent of sigma bar line. 
so this is 10 percent of sigma var line and the 10 percent of sig sigma var is here. So, this is the seat of settlement and this will be about uh, 0.1 percent of sigma var a can be considered as a guideline to determine the seat of settlement. So, uh, we have seen that the n values etcetera we uh, correct corrected n values are used for a depth from here to here or here to here whatever depth we decide depending upon the guidelines given. So, that that most of the settlement is of immediate nature and these the immediate uh, the settlement which we determine for the case of the fine grain soils the settlement is uh, consolidation settlement, but as the uh, rate of consolidation or compression is very high in the case of the granular soils. So, we use the field methods to determine the settlement uh, of foundations resting on such soils. In cohesive soils, the compressibility and consolidation parameters are determined in the laboratory from odometer test and from these the magnitude of settlement if required and also if required the rate of settlement can be estimated. Good undisturbed samples required for the laboratory test can be obtained at the site from for such soils. However, in granular soils which are non-cohesive undisturbed samples are extremely difficult to procure if not altogether impossible. Hence, laboratory test cannot be used to obtain the compressibility characteristics of the granular soils. So, we go for the field test. Settlement computations in granular soils are based on field or in situ test. The most frequently used test are plate load test, standard penetration test and the static cone penetration test. These tests we have already discussed when we discussed the bearing capacity of uh, granular soils. Now, we can determine the settlement of footings based on the plate load test method. Now, this is the setup which we have already dis discussed, but briefly I will discuss here also that a plate is loaded uh, and uh, the settlement behavior of this plate corresponding to different load intensity is uh, observed and then a relationship is developed between the pressure and the settlement of the foundation, settlement of the plate. Now, a typical load settlement curve is shown here, here this is the load intensity in kilo Newton per meter square and this is the settlement of the plate. So, corresponding to any load intensity we find out the settlement of the plate and we get different points and we join them smoothly we get this load settlement behavior. The load settlement curve may be used to determine settlement of foundation. Terzaghi and Peck in 1948 have recommended that the settlement of a footing that is SF on a cohesionless soil that is the granular soil can be extrapolated from the settlement experienced by a test plate that is the settlement of the plate SP at the same load intensity and the following equation can be used. Equation is SF upon SP equal to BF plus BP plus 30 divided by BP BF plus 30 whole square. It may be shown from this equation that in the case of granular soils the settlement of a foundation cannot exceed about 4 times the settlement of a plate of 30 centimeter width howsoever large it may be. However, Jerome and Agastade have shown on the basis of several case records that this equation is really valid for medium and dense sand. Use of it for loose sands may lead to an underestimation of the settlement. So, we will have to be very cautious when we determine settlement of loose sand using this particular equation. It may again be recalled that a plate load test being short duration test the settlement measured is only the intermediate settlement. In granular soils immediate settlement can be taken as total settlement while in cohesive soils consolidation settlement which constitutes most part of the total settlement cannot be predicted through this test. Hence, the plate load test is not of much relevance in clay soils 
for which the settlement criterion is very important in the determination of allowable bearing pressure of a foundation. Now, however, we can use the data obtained from plate load test in the case of uh, cohesive soils also or the fine grained soils also and following equation is sometimes recommended for estimating the settlement of a foundation on clay and that is not actually seriously used in the design that is S f upon S p equal to B f upon B p where B f is the width of the foundation S f B p is the width of the test plate. SF is the settlement of the foundation and SP is the settlement of the test plate. If the test is carried out above the natural water table, the settlement computed from the load settlement curve will have to be corrected if there is a likelihood of a rise of water table at a future date, leading to submergence of the soil below the foundation. The actual settlement is then calculated as settlement computed from the plate load test divided by correction factor and this correction factor given by Peck, Henson, Thorn 1 which we have already discussed is preferred. The allowable bearing pressure for a foundation on a granular soil can be determined by load settlement curve of the test plate. If the permissible settlement of a foundation of width Vf is Sf, the corresponding settlement SP of the test plate of width Vp can be worked out from the equation and the load in intensity corresponding to SP is then read off from the curve which is allowable bearing pressure for the foundation. Rao and Ramasamy in 1980 recommended that the allowable bearing pressure in such a case should be read out on a line joining origin and a point corresponding to 50 percent of QUP that is the ultimate bearing capacity of the test plate. Now, it will become more clear by this solved example how to use this plate load test for determination of the settlement of a footing resting on granular soil. The following data was obtained from a plate load test carried out on a 60 centimeter square plate at a depth of 2 meter below ground surface on a sandy soil which extends up to a large depth. Determine the settlement of a foundation 3 meter by 3 meter carrying a load of 110 ton and located at a depth of 3 meter below ground surface. Water table is located at a large depth from the ground surface. Then the load test data is given in the form of load intensity and settlement like for 5 ton per meter square settlement of the plate is 2, meter, 2 millimeter for 15 it is 7.5, for 30 it is 23.5 and 40 uh, it is 45 millimeter. So, likewise this data is given, we will use this data to plot load intensity versus settlement curve and then obtain the settlement of the foundation. The load settlement curve is shown in this figure. So, from this data we obtain a relationship between load intensity which is given in ton per meter square and the settlement in millimeter. We will get different points. We join these points smoothly. We will get the load settlement behavior of this. In order to determine ultimate bearing capacity, we go for the double tangent method. So, we take a straight line portion of this part of the curve and this part of the curve wherever these two tangents meet that is the ultimate wearing capacity of the plate and we make use of this ultimate wearing capacity of the plate to find out factor n gamma and then we determine phi from there and then n q and n gamma we use for the actual foundation to determine ultimate wearing capacity of the foundation. Now, Ramasamy and Rao have recommended that the uh, this uh, allowable bearing pressure should be determined, uh, it should be read off from a straight line joining this with 50 percent of the ultimate bearing capacity of the plate. So, we will be using this for determining the allowable bearing pressure. Right now, we want to determine the uh, settlement of the foundation. So, first of all we determine what is the load intensity on the footing. Load intensity of the footing is the total load that is 110 tons divided by the area of the footing that is 3 meter by 3 meter square footing it comes out to be 12.2 ton per meter square. So, from the load settlement curve 
corresponding to 12.2 ton per meter square, we find out what is the settlement of the plate. And the settlement of the plate from this figure comes out to be 5 millimeter. Now, we use this equation SF upon SP that is equal to BF plus BP plus 30 divided by BP BF plus 30 whole square. Now, here width of the plate is 60 centimeter and the width of the actual foundation is 300 uh, centimeter. So, we use this data here and the settlement of the foundation which we have already determined for 12.2 ton per meter square from the load settlement curve that is 5 millimeter. When we substitute all these uh, values here, we find that SF, the settlement of the foundation comes out to be 9.3 millimeter. Now, then we apply an embed, embedment correction and in order to use this embedment correction, we use the chart which is given by Fox and is recommended by IS 8009 part 1 1976. So, from this chart, first of all we find out what is the depth of embedment and the depth of embedment is equal to 3 minus 2 that is equal to 1 meter. Now, using Fox correction factor, D up, we first we find out D upon under root L V. So, for D upon under root L V, it is equal to 1 divided by under root 3 into 3 that is equal to 0.33. And this is the case of a square footing L Y B ratio is equal to 1. So, 0.33 we see from here and for a square footing this ratio is 1. So, this particular uh, line or the graph is used and from this we can see that it comes out to be about 0.91. So, depth factor from this figure we can uh, observe and that is 0.91. So, actual settlement of the footing when we apply this embedment correction that will be equal to 0.91 into 9.3 equal to 8.5 millimeter. Now, using the load test data of previous example, we can also determine uh, the allowable load on a 1.5 meter by 1.5 meter column footing with its base at a depth of 2 meter. The permissible settlement of the foundation is 20 millimeter and a minimum factor of safety of 3 is required against shear failure. The unit weight of the soil determined at the base of the test by core cutter method was found to be 2 ton per meter cube. Now, we know that the allowable bearing pressure of a foundation is the minimum or the least value out of two criteria. One is the soil, the soil should not fail in shear that is the bearing capacity criteria and the soil should not experience a permissible settlement more than the permissible settlement. So, we will have to uh, apply these two here and then we will have to find out what is the allowable bearing pressure and then the load the column can carry. The angle of shearing resistance of soil can be worked back with the help of ultimate bearing capacity of the test plate QUP. This QUP is determined as I said is determined by the double tangent method and in this particular case it comes out to be uh, QUP is equal to uh, 24 ton per meter square and for a case of a square footing uh, we can uh, use this relationship for the ultimate bearing capacity of the plate as 0.4 gamma b n gamma since there is no surcharge on the test plate and c equal to 0. So, we, we equate 0.4 gamma b n gamma b, b is the width of the plate b p with this 24 ton per meter square and only unknown is n gamma. So, n gamma can be worked out it comes out to be 50. Now, from the Peck, Henson, Thornburn uh, plots between the uh, n gamma, n q and phi value, we can find out for this particular value of n gamma uh, uh, that is 50, we can work out phi and that comes out to be equal to 36.5 degrees and corresponding to this n q is equal to 40. So, for the foundation net ultimate bearing capacity of the foundation is given by this relationship gamma d f n q minus 1 plus 0 
gamma bf n gamma because it is a square foundation. So, when we substitute all the known values in this equation, we will get net ultimate bearing capacity of the foundation that comes out to be 216 ton per meter square. Now, the new net safe can be found out by uh, dividing it with a factor of safety and that is given as 3. So, when we divide it by 3, it comes out to be 72 ton per meter square. Now, in order to find first of all, we find out what is the settlement of the plate for 72 ton per meter square. Now, that comes out to be equal to 12.8 millimeter. Now, from the load settlement curve, the load intensity corresponding to a settlement of 12.8 millimeter may be determined from the method suggested by Rao and Ramasamy. The net safe bearing pressure that is equal to 32 ton per meter square as can be seen from the next figure. So, corresponding to 12.8 millimeter of settlement, we use the approach used by Rao and Ramasamy. We simply draw a straight line from the origin and we join a point corresponding to 50 percent of the ultimate bearing capacity of the plate and when we extend it, we get this straight line and we read the value of the bearing pressure corresponding to 12.8 millimeter of settlement and that comes out to be about 32 ton per meter square. Hence, the settlement criterion governs the design and the net allowable bearing pressure is equal to 32 ton per meter square. So, allowable load on the footing that will be equal to 32 multiplied by the area of the footing comes out to be 72 tons. Now, there is another popular test which we use in the case of the uh, foundations resting on granular soils and we use this for determination of settlement that is the standard penetration test. Now, for the case of granular soils, the average of the corrected n values between the level of the base of footing and a depth equal to 1.5 to 2 times that is the seat of the settlement, the width of the footing below the base is determined for each of the locations. The minimum of the average of corrected n values for different boreholes is used in the calculation of settlement. IS 8009 part 1 1976 gives a chart for the calculation of settlement per unit pressure and that unit pressure is 1 kg per centimeter square as a function of the width of the footing and the standard penetration test value n. The settlement at any other pressure may be computed by assuming the settlement to be proportional to the pressure. Now, this is the relationship suggested in IS code that is the settlement per meter per unit pressure kg per centimeter square versus the width of footing for different values of n. So, here this is from n equal to 5 to n equal to 60. Now, we can use this particular chart for a given dimension of the footing and for the object and the corrected value of n, we can find out what will be the uh, settlement corresponding to unit pressure and then we multiply it by the actual load intensity and then we calculate the actual settlement of the footing foundation. Now, for the values between uh, like here uh, the relationship is given for uh, n values at an interval of 5. So, for intermediate, intermediate values we can interpolate the value of the settlement. One more thing is obvious from this particular figure that if the width of the foundation is more than 5 meter for all values all n values you will find that the settlement is almost equal whatever may be the width of the footing. If the natural water table is close to the base of foundation a correction factor in the form suggested as below as per IS 8009 is applied that correction factor is 0.5 plus 0.5 dW dash by B, where dW dash is the depth of the water table measured from the base of the footing and it will always be less than or equal to 1. We can also obtain settlement of footings based on the static cone penetration test that is the CPT values or QC values. 
there are two approaches one is given by dbr and martin and another is given by smartman the dbr and martin 1957 proposed a procedure which uses static cone penetration diagram to predict the settlement of a structure on sands the sand stratum is divided into convenient number of layers such that each layer has an approximately the same value of static cone penetration resistance the average static cone penetration resistance of each layer is chosen for the calculation of settlement according to dbr and martins the compressibility coefficient is related to the static cone penetration resistance value that is qc and the effective overburden pressure sigma 0 dash at which the test is carried out and the equation is c equal to 1.5 qc upon sigma 0 dash then the settlement of the layer can be calculated by this equation s equal to 2.3 h upon c where h is the thickness of that stratum log to the base 10 sigma 0 dash plus delta sigma dash upon sigma 0 dash where sigma 0 dash is the initial overburden pressure and delta sigma dash is the increase in uh, pressure due to the loading at that particular level and that level is normally taken as the middle of the uh, layer now here we divide this into number of layers having almost same value of qc so this is one such variation of qc with depth in different layers so depending upon the variation we can divide this into number of layers and the average value is taken as the qc for that particular layer the total settlement of foundation is equal to the sum of the settlement of all individual layers Mayer half observed that the above procedure overestimates the actual settlement in order to rectify it the relationship in place of 1.5 this 1.9 is widely used the procedure is strictly applicable to normally consolidated sands for a preloaded sand deposit a correction factor has to be applied to the settlement computed by the above procedure the uh, smartman a method of calculating settlement in granular soil by using cpt values smartman pointed out that the distribution of vertical strain below the center of a square or circular uh, footing that is the case of axisymmetric on a sand can be simplified in the characteristic manner shown in the next figure the seat of settlement is taken as equal to 2b and 4b below the base of foundation the soil layer is divided into number of convenient layers of thickness delta z and the average static cone penetration resistance of each layer is determined so in this figure you can see the vertical strain influence factor iz and the relative depth below the footing that is ratio z upon b so this is given in the non dimensional form now for the case of the circular footing axisymmetric case this is the relationship and for the square uh, or the strip footing for the plane strain case for l by b greater than 10 this is the relationship now here the seat of the settlement is taken 2b or 4b the maximum value for this particular case in the case of axisymmetric case maximum value of strain value is 0.5 and it occurs at a depth of b by 2 whereas for the case of the plane strain that is the case of a strip footing this min, this value is 0.2 at the surface and it is maximum 0.5 at a depth of b and again 0 at a depth of 4b smartman gave following equation for calculating the settlement s equal to c1 c2 qn and for all these layers from summation from 0 to 2b that is up to the seat of settlement delta z into iz upon es where c1 is the depth embedment factor c2 is the creep factor and qn is the net increase in pressure at the foundation level iz is the average strain influence factor for each layer that can be obtained from the previous figure and es is the deformation modulus for each layer now this c1 is equal to 1 minus 0.5 q0 dash upon qn 
whereas C2 is equal to 1 plus pi 2 log to the base 10 T upon pi 1, where Qn is the grass pressure intensity minus the initial overburden pressure at that particular level. So, Q minus Q0 dash. Q0 dash is the effective overburden at the foundation level. Now, this T is the time in years for which period settlement is required and ES depends on the type of foundation. The correlations for ES are ES equal to 2.5 QC and ES equal to 3.5 QC for square and square footing respectively. So, this is for square footing and this is for the strip footing. The depth at which the maximum IZ occurs may be calculated as follows IZ equal to 0.5 plus 0.1 under root of QN upon P0 dash where P0 dash is the effective overburden at depths B by 2 and B for square and strip foundations respectively that we have seen in the last figure. Further, IZ is equal to 0.1 at the base and 0 at 2B below base for the square footing whereas, it is 0.2 at the base and 0 at 4B below the base for the case of strip foundation. For normally consolidated sands, ES can be taken as 4 QC for values of QC less than 10 and it is 2 QC plus 20 for QC values between 10 and 50 and it is 120 uh, for QC greater than 10. For over consolidated sands with OCR greater than 2, ES is taken as 5 QC for QC less than 50 and 250 for QC greater than 50. Now, this will be more clear by a solved problem. A 2.5 meter square footing is resting on a sand deposit. The total pressure at the foundation level is 200 kilo Newton per meter square. The variation of static cone penetration resistance with depth is given below. So, this is the depth below the foundation level and this is the static cone penetration test value QC in kilo Newton per meter square into 10 to the power 3. Now, from 0 to 1 meter depth it is 3, 1 to 1.25 it is 4, 1.25 to 3 it is 4, 3 to 4 meter it is 7 and 4.05 to 5 it is 3. We will have to determine the settlement of the foundation 6 years after the construction. Use cement main approach. So, we divide this into number of layers and we use the cement main equation to find out the settlement of the foundation. Now, in this case C1 as uh, said earlier, C1 is the depth embedment factor, C2 is the creep factor that we will determine. Qn is the net increase in pressure at the foundation level and that is equal to 200 minus 17 into 2 where 17 is the unit weight of soil and 2 is the depth of the uh, foundation. So, it comes out to be 116 kilo Newton per meter square. Iz is the average strain influence factor for each layer and ES is taken as 2.5 times of QC. For square footing, the depth at which the maximum IZ occurs may be calculated from this particular relationship or can be read from the uh, figure presented earlier. Where P0 is the uh, effective overburden pressure at B by 2 and IZ equal to 0.1 at the base and 0 at 2B below the base level of the footing. Now, C1 can be calculated if we know Q0 dash and Qn. So, Qn is already known, we know Q0 dash also at the depth of the uh, foundation. So, it comes out to be 0.898. Similarly, if number of years are known, then we can calculate C2 that is the creep factor, we substitute it here. So, it comes out to be 1.356. Now, when we substitute these values in this smart man equation, we can obtain the value of the settlement. So, settlement comes out to be equal to 2.0 2.14 0 to 2b delta z ij es. So, this particular uh, calculation is shown in the tabular form in the next slide and that comes out to be 0.1393 and so the total settlement comes out to be 26.7 millimeter. The calculation is shown here. What we have done? We have divided this total depth from 0 to 2b in 5 layers and each layer having different thicknesses. 
here this is 1000 millimeter, 250 millimeter, 1750 millimeter, 1000 millimeter and again 1000 millimeter and for each layer we know the value of QC which is given or obtained from uh, which is given in Clo Newton per meter square and from this QC we can obtain using relationship 2.5 QC the value of ES. So, here 2.5 times 3000 it is equal to 7500 and we also obtain IZ in Influence, vertical strain influence factor either by the correlation or we, we can use that uh, graph to obtain the value of Ij. And once all these are known, we can determine Ij upon Ez into delta Z. Let us say for this particular case, it comes out to be 0 0.0347. In such a manner, we determine this for all the layers and then when we sum up, we will get this summation as 0.139. One nine, and we substitute this in the Summertman equation to determine settlement of the foundation. For the condition shown in previous example, determine the settlement of foundation using the D. Beer and Martin's approach. So, D. Beer and Martin has given this particular equation for determining the settlement of the foundation. The seat of settlement is taken equal to 2b below the base of foundation. The calculations are shown again in the tabular form in the next slide. Now, here the total layer is divided into four layers depending upon the value of QC. So, this is these are the thicknesses of the clay layer 1000 mm, 2000 mm, 1000 mm, again 1000 mm for all the layers and the average value of QC is given for all these layers like for first layer it is 3000 QC. Then sigma 0 dash at the middle of the layer can be determined if we know the depth of the middle of the layer and the unit weight it comes out to be 42.5. Then C value can be calculated as 1.5 QC upon sigma 0 dash. So, this value is calculated. Then delta sigma that the increase in uh, stress at the middle of the layer uh, is determined by 2 is to 1 method or we can use Buzinac or the Westergaard formulations and we find out delta sigma. Then we calculate log to the base 10 sigma f bar sigma 0 bar where sigma 0 bar is the overburden pressure initial overburden pressure and sigma f bar is the summation of these two. And finally, use, using the D Beer and Martin equation we find out the settlement of the first layer then second layer, third layer and fourth layer and when we sum up we get the settlement of the total compressible layer between 0 to 2 b. Delta sigma has been calculated by using influence coefficient for increase in vertical stress under the corner of a uniformly roaded rectangular footing. The total settlement of 38.5 millimeter obtained from D. Beer and Martin's approach is higher than the value of 26.7 millimeter which was obtained from Simmertman method. Using D. D. Beer and Martin's approach but taking C equal to 1.9 QC upon sigma 0 dash as recommended by Mayer Hoff settlement of the foundation will be equal to 30.4 millimeter and which is very close to the Simmertman value. What will be the settlement in previous example if the effect of rigidity of footing and the depth of embedment is taken into account. So, in the last two examples we have not taken into account the effect of embankment as well as the rigidity of the footing. So, rigidity correction factor as suggested by IS 8009 part 1 1978 is 0 0.8. So, mean value of settlement of the foundation will be equal to 0.8 into 30.4 that is the settlement we obtain from the D. Beers and Martin's approach using 1 uh, Q, uh, ES equal to 1.9 into Q C upon sigma 0 dash that is comes out to be equal to 24.3 millimeter. In order to apply the embedment correction factor again we use the uh, curve given in uh, IS 8009 as suggested by Fox and uh, we find out first D upon root LV. So, for this particular case it is 0.8 and L upon B equal to 1. We corresponding to this D upon root LV of 0.8 and L upon B using the uh, appropriate uh, curve we find out the depth correction factor we read from here that comes out to be 0.77 and we multiply 
the settlement as computed earlier by 0.77 it comes out to be 17 millimeter. So, in this lecture we have uh, discussed the methods to determine the settlement of uh, foundations resting on granular soils especially by using the field uh, test data like uh, plate load test and then uh, the standard penetration test and static cone penetration test by various approaches suggested by various researchers. And uh, we have also discussed the correction factors which uh, we use for determination of the actual settlement of the footing uh, like uh, depth factor and uh, embedment factor uh, suggested as suggested in the IS uh, 8009. So, in the next lecture I will discuss the third and important part of uh, settlement that is the consolidation settlement and uh, then how to determine allowable wearing pressure using various approaches. Thank you.